What's up, what's up? It's your man, Jimmy Chan. All right, so we're talking about completing the squares. So here we have our quadratic equation in standard form. So number one, with completing the squares, the first step is always to get A to be one. So A has to equal to one. So that is the criteria for completing the squares. So in order to do that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna divide every single term, which includes the other side as well, because if we divide the left side by eight, we have to divide the right side by eight. So what we're gonna get is x squared minus five eighths x plus one eighth is equal to zero. Yes, there are fractions. It's okay. All right. Second step is that we have to move the so-called old C to the other side. So here's our C term, and we have to move that over to the right side. Since it's plus 1 eighth, we're going to subtract the 1 eighth. So my left side is going to stay exactly the same. But my right side, because I'm subtracting that 1 eighth, I'm going to have a negative 1 eighth on the right side. The third step is that I want to find a new C and I'm going to add that C to both sides. All right. Now I know that C is equal to B divided by 2 squared. So my B here is going to be that negative five eighths and if I square that I mean sorry if I divide that by two what I'm going to get is a negative five sixteenths actually let me change this color right now in front of you <clears throat> and negative five sixteenths squared is going to be 25 over 256 so I'm going to take that, I'm going to add it to both sides. Not just the left side, but also the right side. I know I did that kind of opposite. And since these are positive, we're going to add it. Right? Step four. Step four, we're going to factor the left side, and we're going to add or subtract the right side. Okay, so the left side, the factoring is easy. It's going to be x blank something squared. And that is going to come right from here. And since it's negative, it means we're going to be subtracting. So that part's done. The right side, however, a little bit more difficult. Since we're adding subtracting fractions, we need common denominators. The question is, can we make 8 a 256? So if I take 256 and divide it by 8, I get 32. So in other words, yes, I can. So I'm gonna if I multiply 8 by 32, that means I gotta multiply the top by 32. And if you were to check 8 times 32, you will get 256. Negative 1 times 32, you're gonna get negative 32 plus the 25, which you're going to get a negative 7 over 256, okay? So from there, I now, step 5, I 
is to solve. Anytime I solve, I'm solving for x, so I'm really looking to get that x by itself. But in order to do that, I gotta get rid of that square term first. And the opposite operation of squared is what? That's right, you gotta take the square root. And every time we take the square root, I have to include the plus and minus. Over on the left side, the square and the square root are opposite operations, so they cancel each other out. But my right side is going to be the plus and minus square root of negative 7 is going to be square root of negative 1 and square root of 7. So that's going to be i square root of 7 over square root of 256 is 16. So my answer here is going to be x is going to equal to, since I have to add this 5 16 over to the other side, I'm going to have a 5 plus or minus i square root of 7 all over 16. And that would be my answer since they both have the common denominator, I can actually combine them. All right. And of course, your answer wants it to be two separate things. So it looks like ah, it's going to be choice C. So actually, I can make this bigger and just put a line right down here. There we go. And that's your answer. Hope that helps. If there's any questions, please let me know. See you. Bye.